Hello everybody and thank you for stopping by to watch the video. Today is going to be part three, the final part of my Clockwork Dragon videos and we're going to paint the wings and attach them. Before we get started I just want to let you know that at the end of the video we're going to have some upcoming projects and an announcement. So with that being said let's get started. The paints I use for this project are Citadel's Typhus Corrosion and Gnome Oil, Folk Arts Metallic Copper and Sterling Silver, Reaper Paints, Leather Brown and Shield Brown, and my own little mix that I've been using for the last several videos, the, the Orange Brown, and then you'll see my brown wash in the back, but I'm, I'm not using that. And as always, we use some matte Mod Podge. The first step, which has been the same in all these videos, is a base coat of Orange Brown. After the base coat dried, I used sterling silver on all of these spines on the dragon wings. At this point, I didn't pay attention to how neat I was being. I just tried to get that silver all over the spines and not on the flaps in between the spines. I could always go back later and fix it. So at this point, it's time for a confession. I am really bad at painting wings. I mean really bad. I have multiple models that have been sitting on my shelf for over 10 years because they have wings. At first I thought these wings were going to be pretty easy to paint because they were just flat panels and they were probably intended to just be painted metallic. But as time has gone on and I painted this guy and then I made a base for him, I liked them too much to just take the easy way out and paint all the wings metallic. So I thought what I would go for would be a leather look. I'd paint the spines metallic and then the flaps would be leather. So before I started painting I went ahead and I watched a bunch of videos on how to paint leather. Unfortunately those videos didn't help that much because they wanted me to paint the edges of the leather a different color or use a wash that would flow into the folds of the leather and none of those applied. What I thought I would do was kind of fake the leather look on the wings. So I took some shield brown and made sure it was really wet and just started painting like streaks down the wing, starting at the top and then just dragging the brush to the bottom. My hope was when those streaks dried, they would look like folds in the leather. After that was completely dry, I took my shield brown and did a dry brush over the wings. Once that was dry, I took null oil and I used it as a wash to blend the colors together. After that dried, I went ahead and repainted the metal spines. I painted the gears that I had attached to the wings in a metallic copper. In my mind, those gears would either rotate one way and push the wings open or reverse and pull the wings closed. I used a thin coat of matte Mod Podge once everything had dried to seal it. Once everything was dry, it was time to attach the wings. One thing I noticed when I dry fitted the wings is that when they were attached, they were completely vertical. I decided to clip the pegs that attached the wings to the dragon, and this way I would be able to pose the wings more dynamically. I used super glue gel for the slot for the dragon wing, and then as I held the wing in place, I used some accelerant to dry the glue very quickly. And here he is all finished. 
When all said and done, I'd say the leather did not come out the way I wanted it to. It has more of a wood grain look, but I'm okay with that. I like it a lot. Let me know in the comments what you think and if you have any ideas on how I could have done that leather effect better. Before you leave, I wanted to give a quick update on upcoming projects. As of this video, I am at 22 subscribers and about 450 Instagram followers. And for my first month, I gave myself the goal of 30 subscribers and we're really close. Um, so what I was thinking was when I hit 30 subscribers and 500 Instagram followers, I do something special as a thank you for you guys for watching my videos and subscribing because I'm so appreciative. What I was thinking of is having you guys choose my first major project. And I'm going to show you three projects that I started before I made the channel, but they're not even close to being completed. And then I want you guys to pick one for me to do. Okay, so this first one I have is going to be called the Guard Tower. Now, it may look like it's done, but really it's not even close. For starters, if you look at the right side, it's nice and straight, but if you look at the left side, there's a wave to it, and I don't like that, so I need to fix that. Secondly, I want to cut arrow slits in here. I want to have a platform at the very top of the roof, and then I want to have a wooden roof above that. Also, even though I have all the bricks on here, I would show you how I did this from the start. We wouldn't start at this point, we'd start at the beginning. Now the inside of the guard tower is not playable, and that's because of what I had to use to make the substructure to put all the bricks onto, and I'll show you what that is as well. Now my boy Mel standing at the bottom of the tower is a 42 millimeter figure, so he's not 28 millimeters, and it gives you a kind of a scale of how huge this tower is. The second project I'm gonna call the Roadside Inn, so what I was thinking with this is that it's an inn that's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. So it needs to be safe and protected. So the building is built out of these big chunky bricks. You've got, you know, these double doors that are heavy and, and metal and reinforced. And then it's going to be a two level building. The bottom level would be like a small tavern. And then the upper level would be some rooms. Now this would be completely playable. So basically you'd lift the roof off and then you'd see the top floor or you'd lift the entire building up and you'd leave behind the first floor. The third project is my own unique tile system. Well, it's, it's semi-unique. It's a combination of two systems. It's a combination of Professor Dungeon Master's Ultimate Dungeon Terrain and just your classic tile system that you lay the tiles out as the adventurers you know, move through the dungeon. If you don't know what the Ultimate Dungeon Terrain system is, by Professor Dungeon Master. Let me give you a quick explanation of that. And what he did was he took a circular game board and he put it on a Lazy Susan. The centermost part of the circle is considered the active area. What that means is if you're in the center, you're kind of right in the middle of the action. Now, if you're just outside the circle, then you're nearby. And what that means is you can hear what's going on, but you're not there yet and you have to move closer to get to the active area. And if you're in the outermost perimeter of the circle, and that means you're far away, and therefore you can't see what's happening, you can't hear what's happening, you have no idea what's going on. And this is a very abstract system. It doesn't use measurements where, you know, you move 30 feet uh, for half movement or 60 feet for a full movement. It's just an abstract movement system designed to speed play up. It's a good system when you don't have to worry about distance. You know, like, let's say you're just role-playing in a tavern or even if you're having a, a barroom fight or something like that. Everything takes place in the middle of the board and it's very easy to see and there's no obstructions. Now, what Professor Dungeon Master's done is he's done different boards for different types of terrain. So he has a standard board like I'm showing here, which is just like a dungeon with all the cracked tiles. And then he'll have another board that has, you know, a wood floor on it for, you know, a tavern. Uh, he made another one that's like an ice terrain, so if you're in a cold environment, you know, you can take out that board and use that. What I've done is I've combined that using, using the classic tile system. So all these tiles that you can see here on the board, they're removable. So I can take the whole center section off and just replace it with, let's say, a wood floor. And then I can take that off and replace it with a, you know, um, icy floor or whatever I want to do. And then I can just throw a little scatter around, you know, and make it look like an icy terrain. So what this does is that you only have one board and you don't have to carry, you know, two or three boards or make three or four boards or whatever. Um, you have one board 
and it's got all your tiles on it. Now another benefit of this system is, let's say distance does matter and you want to make sure that your players are showing their movement and how they're moving, you can do that with this too. You can take these tiles off the board and just lay them out as a passageway and then show a room and with a door. So you can go either way with this. The tiles aren't individual tiles. So you don't have to put down a hundred little five foot by five foot tiles across this whole board. They're tile sections. I can take this board and it can be completely empty and I could fill it in about 10 seconds and have it resemble the ultimate dungeon terrain. So for this project, I'd be showing how I made the tiles. I'd be showing a ultra cheap way to make the same exact tiles. And then I would make some different center sections to show the different types of terrain, like a wood floor, you know, a frozen tundra type thing, and then make corresponding scatter to go with it to show how the board works. This system of tiles, I'm calling the versatile system. See what I did there? Please leave a comment below with your choice of which project you'd like me to do. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.